are in your homework 5.1 and what you said numbers were 18 19 20 the last five are ridiculous okay yeah they are ridiculous they are worded wrong they are confusing and i i would suggest don't even do them i mean what i mean is don't worry about them. you you can find a way to do them because they're playing off of the least common multiple and the greatest common divisor because that's what the whole section is about so it says brenda cuts her grass every 10 days and trims her shrub every 36 days so there's your two numbers so what i suggest you do is to take your handy dandy grid and do the least common multiple and the greatest common divisor because that's all i'm going to ask you for on the test i'm not going to give you a bunch of these crazy worded questions so that's all i care about 10 and after today's lesson you're going to see what i'm talking about 36 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13. How many times will 2 go into both of these? 2 will go in there. 5 and what? 18. And at that point, the real math stops. Because nothing will go into both 5 and 18. So I'm going to keep going. How many times will 5 go into 5? Then it won't go into 18. 2. That comes down. That's 9. 3. That comes down. 3. And 3. We got our ones. So this is probably going to be your answer. So here's your 10. So I'm on color that green here's your 10 and then what's 2 times 9 is it 2 times 9 18 and what's 18 times 10 so 180 is your greatest common divisor and your least common multiple is what 2 so one of those answers is the answer depending on how they word the question. And I'd probably be guessing probably 180, but I'll check it and see. And they're either going to ask you for the least common multiple or the greatest common divisor. One of those two. So there's only three things that you should be looking for in 5.1 homework. What are they? Prime factorization, the least common multiple, and the greatest common divisor. That's it. Okay? Don't let those confusing questions that were written by some computer person in My Lab Plus, don't let them confuse you. In 5.1, you've got three questions that I'm going to ask you on a test. One, Prime factorization. Uh, give me a number. 54. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13. 2 will go in there. 27. 3 will go into 27. 9. 3 will go into 9. 3. And three will go in there one time. We got our one. So the prime factorization of 54 is two times three to the third power. That's one thing I'm going to ask you. The second thing I'm going to ask you is the least common multiple. Least common multiple of 27 and 54. Two. 3, 5, 7, 11, and sometimes 13. Uh, let's see. 3. 3 will go into 27 nine times. 3 will go into 5 one time. And then what's left over? 24. 3 will go into 24 eight times. Somebody check me on that. 
3 will go into 9 3 times. 3 will go into 18 6 times. 3 will go into 3 1 time. Go in there 2 times. And now the real math what? Stops. Because nothing will go into 1 and 2 except 1. And that's not going to help you. So this is your least common multiple. 3 to the third power is 20 what? 7. And the third thing is finding the greatest common divisor. And that's going to be 2 times 27, which is what? Greatest common divisor. And what I need on the bottom here, I need 1's. I've got to divide by 2. That 1 will come down, and what's 2 divided by 2? 1. So we are done, and this is your greatest common divisor. It's 2 times 27, which is what? 54. Those are the three things I'm going to ask you on the test. I'm not going to ask you no word problem or no nothing like that. Why? Because in order for you to understand how to do 5.3, you've got to understand how to do this. If you can't do least common, I mean greatest common divisor, that's all you need. If you can't do the greatest common divisor, you can't do 5.4. I'm sorry, 5.3. And that's why I'm so stringent on the greatest common divisor. If you can't do one of those word problems, that's not going to keep you from doing 5.3. But if you can't do least common multiple and greatest common divisor, especially the greatest common divisor, you're going to have problems at 5.3. So don't spaz over those four or five word problems at the end of the 5.1 homework. Because either they're going to ask you to find the prime factorization, or they're going to ask for the least common multiple, or the greatest common divisor. One of those three numbers they're going to, they're going to ask you for. Does everybody see what I'm saying? Okay, so let's go back to the homework and let's do a couple that might be homework, I mean test questions and then we'll move on into the new stuff today. So I'm going to get rid of that, get rid of this, go to the, where is my assignments? 5.1. There's one right there, number 14. 72 and 368. 72 and 368. And how many of these have we done? Look in your notes. 72 and 368. How many? Somebody tell me. I know at least six or seven. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and sometimes 13. All right, do it. I want you to give me the least common multiple and the greatest common divisor. And if you can, just write it up as being a failure. But don't blame yourself. Blame the Russians. what's wrong with my phone lately. Lately, when I go and I try to press my code to get in or whatever, it like hesitates and freezes up. Have y'all noticed anything like that? How old is your phone? It's the Russians. It's the Russians S9. S9 plus. How old is it? Like how many years have you had it? Like two or three months. <laughs> is it an iPhone? No. Oh, I, don't buy, awesome. I don't buy iPhone that's products. Awesome. Phones, after about two years, they start shutting down so that you'll go back to the company to get an upgrade. No, I don't do that. I just keep using it because I know what the that's why I don't like iPhones because Apple is a scam. Everything has to do with Apple. You either have to buy a new one, you have to buy an upgrade, or you have to do this, or you have to jump through this hoop. No, I don't jump through hoops. And y'all know what I'm talking about. 
Every time you need something with an iPhone, you got to buy it, or you got to buy more, buy this, or upgrade to this. Yes, and guess what? And you can't plug your head jack. But what if you want to? What if you want to adapt it? What do you have to do? Well, they made a toggle that you can buy, but that you can what? Uh, and it still don't work. It still, it still won't. It, they made a converter where it uh, adapts to the headphone, but not to where it adapts back yeah. to the laptop. So how convenient! Yeah, you have to go buy. Have to go buy a full headphone. And I don't know why people say that, like iPads or what do you call them, iBooks or yeah, whatever. IPads. I don't know why they're better because. They, I mean, why do you say they're better? Why do people say they're better? Because every time you turn around, you have to either download something or you have to do this so it's compatible with everything else. I never have understood that. When I was coming through Clemson, I had to uh, work on the Macs. They were little Mac, what do you call them? I don't know what they were called, but they were very little. No, they weren't laptops. They were desktops, but they were just the they were just the TV, just the monitor, and had a little slit. I guess they were called Mac something. Max, I don't know. But we could never do anything on them because everything was IBM or whatever, Microsoft or whatever. And I was like, at that time, and that was '94, '95. I was like, what the hell? I was like, why are we using these when everything is this way? And it's been that way ever since. So I really don't understand. Like you said, it's probably the Russians. All right, so can we use a two? We can use anything you want, but I'm going to use a two because two is the easiest one to divide beside the five. So I'm going to use 2 because I'm going to whittle it down to get numbers I can work with. So I know 2 will go in there 36 times. I know that because 2 times 36. Now I'm going to have to use my long division in my head to get to 368. So how many times will 2 go into 3? One time, Hubert. That will leave 1 left over, which will be 16. 16, 2 will go into 16 how many times? Eight times. That leaves zero remainder. How many times will two go into eight? Four. Four. They're both even, so we can still use what? Two. And the reason I use two is because it's the easiest one to divide by beside the five. So two will go into 36 18 times. Two will go into 18 nine times, and four two times. I can still use two. 2 will go into 18 9 times. 2 will go into 92. Well, 2 will go into 9 4 times. That will leave 1 with the 12 is 12 6 times. Uh-oh. Looks like real math stops. Why does the real math stop? Because the only thing that will go into 9 is what? 3. And 3 will not go into what? 46. 46. So real math stops. So 2 times 2 times 2 is what? The least common multiple. Or if I got a bass backwards, which one's, is that the greatest common divisor? Whatever. Whatever. That is that right there. Now, I'm going to get my ones on the bottom. So 3, that'll be a 3, and bring that down because it won't go in there. 3, we got a 1, and 46 comes down. 2, 1, 23, and you're done. Why? 23 is a what? Prime number. So this is your other number. I may be, I may have gotten the number. Remember I told you in class, I may have the words mixed up because I always do that. I guess I'm just So let's see. Is Grace Common Advisor 8? Oh, I've had it mixed up this whole time. Sorry. 
I told you, I told you in class I would probably do that. And now, what is 8? That's 8 times 2. We don't have a 5, so we can't do it easily. So we're going to have to do 2 to the 4th power, which is 16. 16 times 9 is 114. Somebody check me. 144. And 144 times 10 is 1440. That'd be 2880. 2880, I'm thinking. 2880, it's going to be 3200, somewhere around there. What is it? 3312. That's fine. You can use it. I'll give you permission to use a calculator on that. And that's the two answers. So, when we're doing least common multiple, greatest common. Yeah, it's the other way around. So the greatest common two. divisor is 8. It's the smallest number. The least common multiple is 3312. So we need to change that on our Yeah, change it in your notes. That was my fault. And I've been teaching this class for probably six or seven years. I don't know why I can't lock that in my brain, but I do that. Every semester I get them mixed up. I think because a long time ago, it was called the least common divisor. I think that's probably why. I think they changed it sometime in the last five or six years. I don't know, but this one used to be least, and this one used to be greatest. But evidently they've changed it, or this book has changed it. I don't know. But I know in the last three or four years, I've had a hard time calling what it is. Okay? Maybe I can Google it and find out why I get them mixed up all the time. But I, they used to, this one used to have an L in it. But they, who knows? The Russians got in and changed my mind. That's what it was. They beat me up, threw me in a van, and and brainwashed me into thinking that was the least common multiple. That's what it was. Okay, so that's the test question. Make sure you know how to, that's number six or seven that we've done. Let me give you another test question. There's one right there, 15 and 39. 15 and 39. Fifteen and thirty-nine. Two, three, five, seven, eleven, and sometimes thirteen. Take a minute or two and see what you can do with it. like to me everybody's here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the roll so I don't like to do that in case some of y'all self-combust. They log you out. Like if you're not in for five minutes, they log you out. Yeah. Of course, if five or ten teachers did everything in the classroom on the computer, they would get a request not to have a log out time so fast. But when you're dealing with T-Rexes, they're still using overhead projectors, and it's just sad. Okay, five. And which, if I didn't have this nice setup, I would be using whatever I could find. But when you have this setup, there's no need to use the other stuff. So, are your questions you're doing different from the ones that are actually on our homework? Hmm? The questions you're doing on there, they actually different from the ones on our homework? Might be a number change, but okay. they're the same type of question. Yeah, I'm one of these teachers. Okay, I thought I pulled up 155 Have I done both of them? Yeah. Did I do both of them? I wasn't paying attention. Let me check the other one. 
I think the reason it messes me up is each class has five in it. That's what got me messed up. Okay, so I did both of them, so we're good there. Okay. No, uh, I do what I, what I put on the test because I know how it feels to have that teacher that says, okay, A, B, and C are going to be on my test, and then you study A, B, and C, and guess what's on the test? C, D, F, D, J, and K. And that's no fun. That's no fun at all. So I just tell students what I what I what I say is going to be on the test. I done lost my problem. Was it thirteen? Wait, where did it? It's on the board. No, it was, it was on there. Oh well, I hit thirteen and it comes up and goes away. Fifteen and thirty-nine. There we go. Okay, so what number, right off the bat, will go into both of them? Three. Well, why, what about five? Five will go into 39. So three, be a five and a 13. Real math what? Real math stops. Why? What, what indicator tells you that the real math stops? The 13 is a dead giveaway because 13 is what? I want to show you all something. I'm going to show you a trick we learned in the war. Look what one of my students did. Look what they did. I'll show this to y'all. You know what this student did? Actually went on Google and printed out prime numbers up to a thousand. I was amazed. One person that did that. You did it too? Good. Good. Okay, some of y'all did it? Good. I see, I'm not used to that. I'm used to saying 30 people, you know, go print this out, and one person does it. That's what I'm used to. So y'all are doing good. So how do I know that? 13 is a prime number, and also have it where? Right there. So that's a dead giveaway. So I know the real math stops because the only number right here that can go into 13 is 13 1, and that's not 13. So you know that the real math stops because that's a prime number, and that's a prime number. So at that point, we're going to make ones now. So I'm going to use different color, and I'm going to divide by 5. That's a 1, and that comes down. Then I'm going to divide by 5 again. Oh, sorry, 13. And when I divide by 13, I get... One and one. And there's my ones. This is your whatever. It's the second number. Okay? So this first number is three. And the second number is, let's see what it is, 15 times 13. Well, 15 times 15 is 225. So what is 15 times 13? Here's your calculator. Huh? I'm not asking. 195. Okay, that's better. 195 should be your other one. So there's two test questions right there that I showed you along with the other six. So you should have enough in your handy dandy notebook to see what's going on. Okay? So I'm going to put a three there and then a 195. And I apologize for messing up the terminology. I'm going to look that up after class and see if I'm crazy. But I do remember this having an L in it at one time. Yeah. And I think that's what it used to be. The smaller number was the least. And I think they changed it. I don't know if this book changed it or whatever. But we'll move on. Okay. So if I give you a... GCD or LCM question, it's going to look like the six that we did. Okay? If I give you a prime factorization, it's going to look like number 11 or number 12. Like that. That's what it's going to look like. So there's the three type questions I would, or two type questions I would ask you. Now, I'm going to take a second and I'm going to jump over 5.2 for a second. Okay? 
The reason I'm going to jump over it, I'm not skipping it, I'm jumping over it right now, is because I want to show you how you're going to use the, the least common multiple. All right? And this is 5.3. And then I'll go back to 5.2. Okay? So 5.3 is basically how to maneuver with fractions. And this thing is going crazy. I don't know why it's doing this. Okay, 5.3 is basically fractions. And I'm really going to hit on adding and subtracting fractions because that's where everybody has the headaches. Okay? And the adding and subtracting of fractions is directly tied in to the least common multiple. Because to add or subtract fractions, what, what is it that you must have to add or subtract fractions? Common denominator. Common denominator. And the common denominator is a 25 cent word for the least common multiple. Okay? So, I'm just going to give you a problem now. And I'm just going to write 2 over 5 plus 3 over 6. Or let's make that 5 over 6. Because somebody will say, oh, well, you can reduce that down to so I don't want to do that. 5 over 6. And this could be a plus and it could be a minus. Okay, it doesn't matter. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to go over here. Two, three, five, seven, eleven, and sometimes thirteen. Okay, find the least common multiple. I don't care about the greatest common divisor. Find the least common multiple. Go all the way down and get ones across the bottom. In fact, this one doesn't have a greatest common divisor. So it should be easy for you to do. I didn't hear what you think of canceling. That's a multiplication. You can't do it without it. But I'm glad that you remembered that. The question was asked, can't you cancel the fives? You can with multiplication. This is addition. But that's good that you brought it up because we're going to go through with that in just a second. So, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to divide by 5. And that will give us a 1, and that 6 comes down. Then divide by 2, that 1 comes down. That comes down as a 3. Divide by 3, that comes down, and 1, we're done. So what's 3 times 10? And 30 is your common one denominator. Now, let me tell you a little story. The students that can't do least common multiple can't do what? Fractions. If you can't do fractions, you can't do algebra. And thus, the cycle starts. And if you can't do algebra, then eventually you're going to give up on doing algebra. So, think back. When did you learn how to find the least common multiple? And you, I guarantee you between there and fractions is when your mathematic demise probably started. That's great. So I, got a different, I got a different answer because if for 6, I used 3 and got it into time, so I got 3 squared times 5, and that's... Okay, well, let's do 3. 5 and 6, and she used 3 first. 3, 5 comes down. 3 will go into 6 two times. 2, 5 comes down. 1, 5, 1, and 1. 30. Okay. It doesn't matter how you do it, you're going to come out with the same way if you do it correctly. 
So now, now after we found the common denominator, what do we do? We got to convert the what? Well, what's the only? What's the opposite of numerator? I mean denominator. Numerator. I just said <laughs> numerator. So if we've just changed our denominator, we've got to convert the numerator. Five will go into thirty. How many times? Six times. Six times two is what? Twelve. Six will go into thirty. Five times. Five times five is twenty-five. Now add the numerator. What's twelve plus twenty-five? So the answer is 37 over 30. There's two questions that are usually asked here. One is, what did you do again? And two, why, is it, why don't we change it to 1 and 7 over 30? Well, I can answer the second one right quick. It's not a word problem asking for measurement. If it was asking for a measurement, then we would change it into a mixed number. So there's the answer to the second question. The answer to the first question is we have to, if whenever we change the denominator to a common denominator, we have to change the numerator. Okay? So I'm going through it again. How many times will 5 go into, I don't know why this thing is acting up, go into, I'm not going to write it because all this is going to do is confuse you. How many times will 5 go into 30? Six. And six times two is twelve. Twelve. How many times will six go into thirty? Five. five times five is twenty-five. Now, this is not the only problem we're going to do. By the time we get through with five point three, you're going to be sick and tired of doing fractions. Okay? Because I can tell you right now that close to 40% of your unit one test is going to be fractions. Yeah. Okay? So let's do a nerd. Let's do one tenth plus three over seven. Okay? Find your common denominator. Now, I mean it with prime factorization. I don't mean, I don't want you to think, because that's where some of y'all get in trouble. 7 and 10. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and sometimes 13. Well, I'm going to tell you what some students think after we do this, but I'm going to tell you what happens. So what number are you going to pick from the get-go? Seven. Seven. That's going to give you a one and a ten. And then a two. That comes down and you get a five. And then a five, you got that comes down, and then you got a one. You got your 70 is your common denominator. Well, there's going to be a student out there that goes, well, heck, I knew it was 70 because I multiplied 7 times 10. Well, you can do that when one of your denominators is prime. Okay? You can do that. If you want to remember another rule, you can remember another rule, or you can just do them all the same way. Now, how many times will 10 go into 70? Seven. seven times one is seven. seven. How many times will seven go into 70? Ten, Ten times three is, and 30. what's 30 plus seven? Now tell me why fractions are so hard. Fractions are hard because you can't usually find the common denominator. The reason you can't find the common denominator is because you don't know how to use the least common multiple. 
or you just multiply two big numbers and get a bigger number for the denominator, then you can't reduce it down. And you get it wrong because you can't reduce it. Let's do another one. Two over six plus three over seven minus one over two. Hopefully get some of y'all quit on this one. How we doing easily? Doing good. Y'all still there? I remember. And believe you me, we're going to do just like the other one. We're going to keep doing problems, keep doing problems. The next time we do this, it's going to be scientific notation. Yes. That is something. Which way do we read? Which way do we read? Left or right. Left or right. So I'm going to draw my, I'm going to put a two here, seven, a six here, and a seven here. Two, three, five, seven, eleven, and sometimes thirteen. What number am I going to pick right off? Two. two. One, three, that comes down. Three, that comes down. Three, well, one, and seven comes down. Seven, that comes down, that comes down, and there. So what's six times seven? Okay, now I want y'all to convert it and finish it. Now, you know the good thing about this? Let me show you a trick I learned in the war. How many, let's say that you don't have any idea about your multiplication tables. How many times will 6 go into 42? You go over here and you put your hand over the 6. 2 times 3, what's left? That number down there, what's that number? 7, Seven times. 7 times 2 is what? 14. How many times will 7 go into 42? You go over here and you cover up the 7. 6 times. 6 times 3 is what? 18. How many times will 2 go into 42? 21 times. 21 times 1 is what? Now you can finish. I guarantee you there's somebody in here that's going, I've never seen this before. Well, you ain't never seen it before because it's not on the test. It's not on the test, it's not taught. No, there's no one teaches the test. So what's 14 plus 18? Dang old 32. So this turns into 32 or 42 minus 21 over 42. And what's 40, 32 minus 21? 11. So the answer is 11 over 42. All right, questions? All right, let's do a nerd. Three over 50 plus one over 75 minus three halves.
52, 50, 75. Ready? So what number I'll use first? Two. I'm gonna use two exactly because that two and that fifty. So I'm gonna use two. That's gonna give me a one, a twenty-five, and that seventy-five just comes down. Now what? Twenty-five. Five. Four, five. I'll give me a one, a five. And 5 will go into 7 one time and 15. Now what? 5. That will give me a 1, a 1, and a 3. And then what? Three. 1, 1, and 1. Oh, I got a 10 right there. What's 3 times 5? 15 times 10? 150. Now here's where it really helps you because most of you don't think in terms of 75 and 50. Now watch this. How many times will 50 go into 150? Well, you go right here and you say 50. Hold on a second. I'm going to knock 50 out by saying 10 times what? 5. And what's left? Three. So 50 will go into 150 three times. Three times three is what? Nine. Some of y'all are getting it. 50 will go into 150 three times. Three times three is nine. So I'm going to go back over to my 75. How many times will 75 go into 150? Well, I don't know. So I take 75. 75 is 3 times 25. How many times? Two times. Because 2 is the only thing left. So, 75 will go into 150 two times. Oh. Two times 1 is... How many times will two? Well, all you got to do is knock out the two right here, and that leaves you with what? Three times what? 25, which is 75. 75 times. 75 times three is what? 215? I don't know. Somebody uh, check me. I'm sorry, what? 225. 225. So nine plus two is what? 11 minus 225, and you're going to get a negative, which we're going to talk about that later, but I'm good right there. So, Mike, what's 11 minus 25? Negative what? Negative 214? Yeah. yeah. So, just be clear. Just make sure we're right. The first thing we do is do the top denominator. Yeah. You're converting. You're converting the numerator to match the common denominator. All right. Who's got a question? Well, I see we got a few more minutes. There's time for one more. So let's do one more because the more y'all have in your notebooks, the more you.
follow along with the video or filter this to you when you're doing your homework. So let's go with, I'll do one all the way through. One over 27 plus two over nine. Mine are plus one over Sometimes 13. What number do you think I'm going to pick first? Three. Three went to nine. Three times. Three will go into 27. Nine times. Three will go into 54. Well, three will go into five one time. That'll leave 24, which is what? You can pick three again. Three will go into three one time. Three will go in there three times. Three will go into 18 six times. Real math stops, which we don't care because we don't care about the first number. So I'm going to divide by three again. One, one, two, and divide by two. One, one, one. So what is 2 times 27? 54, Hubert. Thank you, class. All right, convert and finish. Seven go into fifty four. Two, Two times one. Two. How many times will nine go into fifty four? Six times two. Y'all know those microphones are very sensitive, don't y'all? 54 will go into 54. How many times? 1 times 1 is 1. What's 2 plus 12 plus 1? So your answer is 15 over 54. I want you all to continue to work on 5.1. I do not want you to work on 5.3 yet until I finish with fractions. So y'all finish up 5.1 tonight, okay? Y'all have a good day. And you got the night off. <laughs>